the gateway drug for old order and conservative communities into popular culture is sports and probably also news. Like their counterpart, most Christians love sports. In the old order Mennonite community radio and television were taboo. But, games were broadcasted into milking parlors, barns, and cabinet shops. During the Olympics, the youth group got a clear idea which families actually had a small black and white television in the back room. It was sports that pulled Mennonites into popular culture, more so than music or movies. Sports was the social lubricant that facilitates hours of frivolous small talk. Three church services every week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. And without fail, for the most part, I would walk down the stairs after the service and sit or stand with the other boys as they would talk about sports. Let's take a glance at that popular catcher, Gabby Hernandez, in action. Come on, old boy, old boy, put it right in her old kiddo. Give me the old doctor right in the middle, old boy, old boy, right in the old groove, old kid. Come on, old boy, old boy, can't keep it all, can't put it right in there, old boy. Little cover up there, cover it up there now. Come on, let's go, let's go now. The more sports you watch, the better you were prepared to fall into these long conversations about scrimmages, statistics, players, and the games that were going to be coming up the following week. It wasn't even a consideration that we would talk about the sermon or other things. Just there was there wasn't spiritual talk. The spiritual <laughs> the sermon was over, and now we can get on to fun stuff to talk about. And I was completely in the dark. I didn't follow sports at all. Um, I, and I think I was the only one. This was the lingua franca of the Mennonite teenage boys, as was for the most part, most boys in the States um, and even maybe around the world. <laughs> Through the center of the line, and there's a pileup. Is it a touchdown? Did he make it? Is it a touchdown? Is it? Mm, it could be. Parents were happy that kids were talking about the Baltimore Orioles over other forms of pop culture because um, if you want trivial entertainment, entertainment that doesn't challenge your worldview, doesn't push any boundaries, um, sports is it. Sports is a great very mind-numbing neutral entertainment that's not it's not it's not going to challenge anything it just isn't it's that's not what it's about it's not going to push critical thinking and now the event of events the indianapolis speed class we're in the last lap of this grueling race car number 65 is in the lead followed by car number 17. It's only a matter of time before that gets expanded out into other forms of entertainment. He did it, of course, in good Delawarean fashion. It was actually, a, you know, a, a backhanded compliment. I don't blame these parents. I think that was a good choice. It's much safer to have your kids watching sports than even Star Trek or Star Wars, where there could be some subtle influence of Buddhism or some other worldview in it where sports has none of that. I'm five foot eight. I'm reasonably athletic. I can, I've enjoyed lifting weights over the years. I ran a marathon back in 2000. Um, but my high school relationship with sports was more like Charlie Brown. <laughs> so <laughs> it was eight inches shorter. I mean, I was five foot tall, 100 pounds when I was 16. So it's it's easy to be critical when you are a late bloomer, when you don't fit in and you're not excelling at something. Had I been an athlete and done well and followed sports, it's possible that I would not find this compulsion to talk about sports at church three times a week for hours at a time. I might have been fine with it and, and would have felt like that's what Jesus would want me to do. <laughs> the girl, in Schwarzenegger's sketch, mimics Michael Jordan's 1988 leap from the free throw line. That same year, girls at Greenwood Mennonite School were still not permitted to wear shorts to play basketball. They were required to play in culottes and t-shirts. 
GMS had no athletic director or expensive gymnasium. They didn't spend 10% of their school budget on such an extracurriculars. The students and community exercised much school spirit watching the green machine win and lose at basketball. I was just really touched deeply again and reminded about how this Mennonite community has left a legacy of faith and intercession and support and what an impact that has had on my own personal life. Got to get that moisture out of my eyes. It's a place where we restore. It's a place of privacy. Home should be a place of protection because when they even go to school, sometimes school children can be cruel to each other and they get mocked. And sometimes they get abused by one another, even in our circles, and I understand that. You know, with, maybe children don't mean to be bullies, but these types of things happen. And when children come home, there needs to be a mother who has time and bring love and security and consolation to that child. She is concreting a future, a foundation beneath his feet that's going to teach him that he can go to school and he can be kind, he can stand against some of those, you know, children can be cruel. 12 up to, through high school, Sunday afternoon in the summertime, we go play football. So two o'clock or after we ate lunch, we'd head over, I don't know, Lester Beaches or somewhere over there, or just depending, different places. And we'd play tackle football. And, and the range was anywhere from like 11, 12 up to college age. So you'd have people 250 pounds and I was probably 65 pounds and, and we played tackle football. And I still remember coming home from those games just feeling bruised and beaten and, oh, man, but it was a good feeling. Man, we were playing football. And, and I remember how it would work um, because we didn't follow all the rules. We didn't have any equipment. We, we just played. And, you know, you'd get the ball, you'd hike, and you'd take off, and then somebody would tackle you. And that, that's not enough. Pile on, pile on, pile on. And... For a little 65, 70 pound boy, you know, the first one hit whoop, then whoop, and boom, and it's just pile up. And it's like, ah, get off, I can't breathe, you know. And I, I just remember the feel of that. And you know, there's, there's some people in our society that have been crushed through no fault of their own. It, it's just circumstances, families, history are being crushed. We need to hear from those people. We need to listen. We need to learn from them. That as a minister, as a pastor, I must always be working myself out of a job. We are to be training and calling new people to step in.